So hello and welcome to this video about monitoring bandwidth using flow or packet sniffer sensors. My name is Kimberly Trommler, I'm a systems engineer at Pessler and today I'm going to be covering very briefly what the four methods are that PRTG offers for bandwidth monitoring and then going into detail on how to do net flow and other flows and the packet sniffer sensor. What I'd like to start with is a really good article out of our knowledge base which you can find on our website if you search for bandwidth comparison. This table will then show you the four different methods that we offer for bandwidth monitoring. Um, the first one is WMI based for Windows machines. Then we have SNMP based for standard SNMP traffic measurements. We have the packet sniffer which we'll be doing in detail today and also the different flow sensors which we'll also be covering in detail today. Um, if you go through this table, you can see what the different features are for the different methods to decide which method is the most appropriate for what you're trying to do. Um, very roughly, you can draw a line down the middle of the table and say that the WMI and SNMP sensors are a lot lighter, both for PRTG and for your target system, than packet sniffer and flow sensors, um, and they deliver a very different type of information. With WMI and SNMP, what you will get is the total amount of traffic and some layer 2 and layer 3 statistics like the number of errors or the number of broadcasts. If you need to go higher than layer 3, um, up to TCP and UDP, the layer 4 level, um, then you need to use the packet sniffer or net flow. So the packet sniffer and net flow show you not just how much traffic did you have, but what was in that traffic. Um, how much of it was web, how much of it was email, how much was FTP, etc. So that's the most important difference between the left-hand side of this table and the right-hand side of this table. So um, let me look at the other bandwidth sensors that PRTG offers just to give you an, an idea of what we have. Um, PRTG has roughly 200 built-in sensor types. This list shows the ones that are relevant to bandwidth. Um, and the yellow box shows the ones we're going to be looking at today. So we have NetFlow 5 and NetFlow 9 and IPFix, which is like NetFlow version 10. We then have JFlow, which is Juniper's version of Flow. Uh, we have SFlow, which is a standardized flow protocol um, used a lot by HP. And then we have the packet sniffers. Um, for each of these, there's also a custom sensor. I'll mention later um, what you can do with the custom sensor. All of the flow ones work the same way. So I'm going to show you today NetFlow 9. What is important um, when you're setting them up is to make sure that you are using the correct version. Um, your device will be sending a specific version. You must make sure that the sensor that you have in PRTG is set up for that version. Otherwise, the sensor won't work. So let's look at a NetFlow sensor. Now, the very first step in setting up a NetFlow sensor is to get your switch configured. Um, to send the flow. Now this is not trivial. It can be very, very difficult um, to get your switch to even send flows. Um, once you have flows being sent, then you can set up a sensor. And I'd like to show you um, the steps to set up a new sensor. So let me start by adding a new sensor. And I'm going to add it to the probe device. I will mention here you have an option um, with these sensors to add them to the probe or to add them to individual devices. We recommend first add it at the probe level, make sure everything is working, and after you've got it working okay, then move it down to the device level. So for today, I'll do a probe. And I need a NetFlow sensor. I'm gonna use version nine because the switch I'm testing today sends version nine. And here are the settings that I can use when I'm setting it up. I need to name it something. I'll call it Video Net Flow 9. I must say what port the NetFlow is sending on. Um, you need to configure on your switch to send the flow on a specific port, and I need to make sure the port matches here. In my case, it's 9997. The sender IP we recommend in the first step to leave blank, then PRTG will just accept net flows from any device. Uh, later on, if you want to have flows only from one specific device, you can put an address in there. Um, I'll put one in for now. I then need to say which of the IPs, which of the PRTG server IPs should receive the packets. What the timeout is going to be. Um, the timeout that you put here 
should be larger than the one that you put on your device. Um, I happen to know that for this device, three is a good three minutes is a good timeout. Then the sampling mode. Uh, what is sampling in Flow? Um, by default, with Cisco um, and NetFlow, it will inspect every single packet on the switch and include every single packet in the flow information. This um, can create quite a heavy load on your switch. So what you can do is to specify on the switch, don't look at every single packet, look at every fifth packet, say. And that is then called sampling. You sample every fifth packet. We recommend doing sampling um, with NetFlow. With SFlow, it's a requirement to do sampling. So I'm going to say here, yes, I am doing sampling. And um, if I had said take every fifth packet on the switch, then here I would have to put in a five saying, telling PRTG I'm sampling every fifth. PRTG will then multiply the results that it gets in the flow by five um, to bring the total traffic up to what the total traffic would have been on the switch. But my switch is actually not sampling, so I need to turn it off for a second. Um, you can then decide what should be logged to the disk. And here, interesting, the channel configuration. These are the different ports or protocols um, that, by default, PRTG will look at. And you can choose to toggle them on and off here. If you have other ports or other protocols that you're interested in that are not in this list, that's where the custom sensor comes into play. Instead of adding just a regular NetFlow version 9 sensor, you would add a NetFlow version 9 custom sensor, and then you can specify which protocols should be considered. The filtering should be left blank initially, um, but once everything is up and running, if you want filters, you can come back and change the settings. If you mouse over the box, uh, you will get a list on the right-hand side of what you can even choose for filters. The include filter then specifies um, which flow information you're interested in at all. And the exclude filter um, will then throw away um, bits of the flow information that you're definitely not interested in. But please, in the very first step, no filtering. First get the flows arriving and working, and then go back in a second step and add filters. So let me continue now. And now PRTG is creating the sensor. I'll scroll down to the list to find my new sensor. It's down here. It's still gray because it's still initializing, still collecting data. I'll force it to update now. So my sensor has initialized and has collected the initial data. As you can see here, I've got a few different protocols showing up. I've already got a few top lists, but I'd like to show you a, a sensor that's been running for a while so you can see what it looks like after you've collected more data. So I'm going to go back to my <clears throat> list of all of my sensors and find one that has been collecting data for a while. Now, if you have any trouble setting up the sensor, um, there's a couple of things you can try. Um, obviously, you want to start looking at the configuration on your switch to make sure that it is actually sending flow data um, to the, the port number and, and IP address that you've specified. Um, if you're certain your switch is sending data, uh, but PRTG doesn't seem to be receiving anything, there are a couple things that could be commonly going wrong. Um, one is you may have devices between the switch and PRTG that are blocking the flow, so you'll need to check um, if there are any access lists or firewalls in between that are blocking this. Um, you'll need to check that the version that your switch is sending is the same version as the sensor where you're trying to receive it. And then there are different tools you can try for debugging. If you're sure that the PRTG server must be receiving something but it doesn't seem to be doing anything, um, we'd recommend using Wireshark um, to check that the flows really are arriving. Other tools you can try are a couple of freeware tools that we have on our website under products and then networking freeware. We offer a NetFlow generator and a NetFlow tester. Um, I'm not going to run them now, but I'll, I'll show you the page. The NetFlow generator um, sends flows in proper flow format, so you can see that your receiver, in this case your PRTG server, um, is actually receiving proper flows. I would like to mention here, because um, customers are sometimes confused, this generator is sending artificial or fake data. It's not sending real data from the server where it's running. It's just making up data, but it's sending it in a, a proper flow format um, so that you can check 
that your flow receiver sensors are working correctly. The other test tool is the NetFlow tester. This will copy what uh, a machine is receiving from a Cisco switch as NetFlow um, so that you can use it for debugging as well. Um, so if either of these sound interesting to you, they're both free. Uh, just download them, give them a try. They're very useful in debugging NetFlow problems. But let me now look at our NetFlow sensor that's been up and running for a while. Um, this one, as you can see, has different um, protocols in the traffic. These are based on what TCP or UDP port um, was in use. These can be customized, the names can be customized, or which port numbers it looks at can be customized by using the custom version of the sensor. You will then see always the same three top lists, the top talkers, the top connections, and the top protocols, and you can add new top lists as you like. Uh, let me look into one of these in detail to show you what's in a top list. You get a diagram showing who the talkers were, the, the sender and the receiver. And if you scroll down a little bit, you get the actual table showing which machine was talking to which machine for how much traffic and how, what percentage of the total traffic that was. To add a new top list, you go to add top list and put in something. Choose create your own. And then you'll get a list of different um, values you can choose to filter on. So source IP and port, destination IP and port, various things. Another important piece of information about the NetFlow sensor is how much of this data is actually being saved to disk so that you can do historical analysis. What gets saved is what has made it into the top lists and has made it through your filters. So please consider carefully what you filter on um, because whatever you have filtered out is no longer available after the fact for debugging. Um, so we would recommend if you can, don't bother filtering, just do the top lists. If you're using VMware and you're using the virtual switches uh, within VMware, then you may be interested in another article on our website that explains how to get the virtual switches to send flow and then how to set up a NetFlow sensor um, for the virtual switches. And there's one more article that's interesting. If you're having trouble configuring NetFlow on your Cisco devices, then we have a, a list of tips and tricks for different Cisco devices. Um, in particular, we find a lot of customers have trouble with NetFlow over IPsec tunnels. If you're having trouble with that, please check out the Knowledge Base article. We have um, a good tip for working around the problem. In particular, you'll end up using flexible NetFlow, but only the standard fields within flexible NetFlow. Uh, so now I'd like to, to move away from the NetFlow sensor and talk about the packet sniffer sensor. Um, as soon as you say packet sniffer, what comes into almost everyone's mind is Wireshark. And so I'd like to say right up front, the PRTG packet sniffer is not a replacement or competitor for Wireshark. Um, Wireshark is an excellent tool for very detailed analysis and debugging. Uh, the PRTG sensor does not go into that level of detail. It's meant more for collecting historical data. Um, the output from a PRTG packet sniffer is actually very similar to the output from a NetFlow sensor, um, but with a very different source of information. Um, with NetFlow, you're getting the flow sent to you actively by a switch in your network. With the packet sniffer sensor, you need traffic that PRTG can see so that it can sniff and analyze the traffic. And there's basically three ways you can do this. Um, you can, first of all, just have PRTG sniff the traffic that it sees anyway um, on its network ports, but this is usually not adequate. Um, you usually have something more specific in mind, in which case um, your second option and the most common one is to use spanning or mirroring on your switches and to connect PRTG to the span port. Uh, then PRTG can see all of the data running over that switch and can do the packet sniffing analysis. If you have multiple switches and you'd like to do packet sniffing for all of them, then you can buy little hardware devices that will connect to multiple span ports, collect all of the span data and summarize it into one stream that you then send to PRTG. So those are your three options. Um, once you've got data coming in, the sensor is actually quite similar to the NetFlow sensor. Let's start by setting up a new one again. So I'll go to add sensor. 
and you can add this at the probe device. So I'll add this one to the probe device. And I'm looking for a packet sniffer. There it is. And let's see what options we have now for the packet sniffer. I better name it something first. Video packet sniffer. Again, here you have include and exclude filters. And if you mouse over, you will see what the options are for um, defining the filters. In the first step, please do not filter. Let everything in. Um, once you know you've got traffic arriving correctly, um, go back in in a second step and start adding the filters. Um, you then must specify which network adapters traffic you're interested in. Again, what you would like to log to disk. Uh, similar to NetFlow, which um, protocols you'd like to see based on the port number. And if you need other protocols, then instead of the regular packet sniffer sensor, you can use the packet sniffer custom sensor. I'll leave this as default for now and press continue. And go back and find the new sensor I just created, which is still gray because it's initializing. And let's wait a second until this one has got its first data as well. So the sensor has come back up and we now have some initial information from our packet sniffer. You can see a few protocols have come through, not too much in the stream yet, but we already have our first uh, top lists for our talkers, connections and protocols. Very similar to NetFlow. If I look at one of these top lists, I'll see who say the top talkers were and I can scroll down a little bit and see in a table who they actually were. To maybe see a little bit more detail, I'm going to choose a different packet sniffer, one that's been running for a little while. And there's one. So we have a bit more data, a few extra top lists. We have the same question here, how much of this is actually getting saved to the disk for historical analysis? And similar to the NetFlow sensor, what is being saved is whatever is in these top lists. Um, and whatever has made it through your filters. <clears throat> and by default for the top list, we'll save the top 100 entries, but this is also configurable. Um, if you're having problems, say, with disk space on your PRTG server, you might want to move it down. If you're having problems with load um, because of NetFlow, then there's a couple of tips. Um, one of them is we would strongly recommend then looking at your sampling rate. And if you're not sampling, then start sampling. And if you are sampling already, then maybe increase the sampling rate from you know, every fifth packet to every tenth, say. Um, if the problem is not load on your switch, but load on PRTG, um, you can offload both packet sniffer and uh, NetFlow sensors onto remote probes, um, so that a lot of the, the processing is done then by the remote probe instead of by the core server. Um, and our other tip is if you're working a lot with top lists, especially complicated top lists, um, to keep in mind that during the polling period, all of the data for the top list is being held in RAM. Um, so if you're having memory problems on your PRTG server, um, we'd recommend either simpler top lists or lower the polling period um, so that the amount of data that needs to be kept is lower. Um, so that's what I wanted to show you today with NetFlow and with Packet Sniffer. If you have any questions um, about either of these sensor types or about anything else in PRTG, please feel free to write to us at any time at support at We'd be happy to help you. Thanks a lot and goodbye.